Good day, my students, viewers, and listeners across the globe. My name is Dr. Bob Bright. I'm here to present one of our lecture series titled Marine Microbiology. Marine Microbiology. So, marine, popularly known as ocean or sea, is of importance. It's a large water body consisting of several water subunits. Marine microbiology is a branch of microbiology that deals with interaction and interrelationship between microorganisms and other organisms within the marine ecosystem. Within the marine ecosystem. It is made up of one, more than 70% of the Earth's surface more than 97 percent of the water bodies and 32 percent of the net primary production it includes the marine ecosystem include the salt marshes one two the estuarine rain three the lagoon four the intertidal ecosystem and then five the rocky subtidal ecosystem the salt marsh estuary lagoon Intertidal ecosystem and the rocky subtidal ecosystem. So, next is uh, features of the marine ecosystem. The marine ecosystem, one, is divided into different depths and shore lines. Divided into different depths, that is water depth and what? Shore lines. So, there are different shore lines and different depths which we are going to see subsequently. Two, it is icy. Eyes, forming of eyes. It is icy and what? Dark in the what? Bottom. So, usually light is darker at the bottom. Only and light and uh, full of light view at the surface. It is separated by thermocline and seabed at the bottom. Thermocline is a point where there is, it is either cold or what? Hot. So, it's separated by thermocline. Okay, and then seabed. So at the bottom of the sea, bottom of the sea is what we call what the sea bed. So because it is highly, it is a high reservoir of water. It is continuously there is continuous pollution. You know, there is continuous pollution. Water from the rivers and different water tributaries and channels they come. They are being received there. So there is continuous pollution leading to what low inorganic matters and the uh, carbon level so the carbon level of nutrients they be get they keep getting low because of the high level of pollution uh, five is that the marine environment it has low oxygen level so it is which we call the anosinic what environment leading to low oxygen what level so as the oxygen level is low there is high and also high hydrogen sulfide level so the hydrogen sulfide level keep increasing why the oxygen level keep what? Depleting. That is why we say that it is what? An anosinic what? Environment. So these are the five features of the marine ecosystem. So the next one now we want to dwell, dwell on is the adaptive features of microbes in the marine ecosystem. Adaptive features. That is, what character do they have to live or survive what character do this microbe possess naturally for them to do what adapt or live in the world in the eco that marine ecosystem one of them is that one they possess what capsule they possess what capsule now this capsule helps them to you know to fight or be pathogenic to fight their enemies or be pathogenic to their enemies okay two they carry out oxygenic photosynthesis here they convert light energy into what here they convert light energy into what uh, into atp atp is an acronym that stands for adenosine triphosphate which is the energy currency of what the cell three is that they possess transport protein so a lot of transport protein are present in the cell membrane and cell wall of 
this microorganism. So they have to transport these nutrients in the marine ecosystem from outside to inside. That is extracellular to what? Intracellularly. Then they carry out metabolism to break them down and use them as form of food or feeding. Four is that they possess concentrated fatty acids. So they are, they are cell membrane, you know, they have well rigid uh, fat, saturated uh, fatty acids. So the fatty acids they possess here is that, you know, they have it because it helps them to, uh, to make their cell rigid, strong and uh, adaptable. The marine ecosystem. Five is that they carry out assessment. You know, in this uh, assessment, they produce cysts who they use to fight their enemies as a means of survival. It's a survival strategy. Example is the amoeba in that ecosystem. The sixth one is that they possess sophisticated what? Enzyme. So we know enzyme. enzymes are organic, uh, they are organic catalysts or inorganic catalysts too. So they have to speed up chemical reaction or metabolic processes, either outside or inside the cell. So this enzyme helps them to break down this substrate and then absorb them in the lowest possible form as food. Then they have well-coordinated gene system. So this gene system have them both in transcription and what? Translation. To transcribe um, DNA to messenger RNA and then translate them from the messenger RNA finally to what? Protein. This, the eighth one is that they possess what? Plasmids. They possess what? Plasmids. Plasmids is an extra-chromosomal genetic material that replicates independently of the cell chromosomal what? Uh, the DNA. So plasmids, there are a lot of plasmids. They possess either catabolic to break down substrates or resistance to antibiotics because of exposure. A lot of chemicals are exposed, so they possess resistance plasmid to help them to survive. Also, what you all notice is that they possess flagella. They possess what? Flagella. Flagella is an organelle. They have them to move from one point to what? Another. Within the marine what? Ecosystem. So with the help of flagella, they can move to a suitable. So if the environment is not suitable, nature endow this organelle in this these microbes so that they can now move with these organisms from one point to what another and tell them to survive the harsh what environment. So the next one now as part of the marine microbiology is the marine water depth. So in the previous uh, previous one I was talking I mentioned that the marine is divided into different water depths and shorelines. So this is the shoreline which we are talking about here. So there are five depths or zones, water depth or zones we have. There are five. One is the epipelagic or photic zone. What is the water depth below the sea level? It is zero to what? 300. So at, and this zone is divided into three. One is the littoral, two is what? The limnetic. And three is what? The profundial, the profundial uh, subzone, subphotic uh, zone. So that is the divided into three. At this point, mostly we see the phototrophs. Hmm? The phototrophs, the autotrophs, the organotrophs, and several of them. So the second zone is the mesopelagic zone. The mesopelagic zone has a water depth of 300 to 1,000 below what? The sea level. The third water depth is uh, 1,000 to 3,000. And it is called the Banti or Bento Pelagic Zone. Banti, B-A-N-T-H-Y. Or Bento, B-E-N-T-H-O. Bento Pelagic Zone. The fourth zone is the abyssal pelagic that has a water there below the sea level of 3,000 to 4,000 meter. The fifth water depth is called the hado pelagic zone. Hado, H-A-D-O, hado pelagic zone. And it has a water depth of more than 4,000 below the sea level. So, from two, from this 3,000 to 4,000 
meter below the sea level, the water depths keep getting deeper and the darker it becomes. So here, most of the we don't see phototropes because of the absence of light. We see mostly um, the chemo autotrophs, those organisms that use chemical substances or nutrients to make their own food by themselves. Okay? There is low metabolic activities going on and several other dynamics also play, which you are going to see in the uh, in the course of this words lecture. Okay, so I want to say here that the depth ranges, there is five depths ranging from, from epipelagic or photic, the mesopelagic, the banti or bento, the abyssal, abyssal, a b y w s o pelagic and lastly the what the hado pelagic eh? zone so now the next one is the factors affecting these microbes in the marine ecosystem one the first one here is the temperature temperature is very important the degree of coldness or hotness of the place so it affects so the marine ecosystem mostly at the, as we go down the sea, it's very hot, but the top is cooler. Okay? The pH, the range of alkalinity, acidity, or neutrality of a substance or a system. So the marine ecosystem it has a mixture of both acidity, alkalinity, but mostly alkalinity because of the high salt content present in that system. So the next one now is the salinity. So salinity is the, the salt concentration. Wow. Marine ecosystem is highly salty. So it is highly salty. The salt concentration is very, very high. Like in most countries, marine ecosystem, they produce salt using their marine water bodies. Okay? As a source of raw material, raw, as a source of a natural source. Okay, then the, fifth, the fourth one is the water current. So, water current, sometimes it can be high, it can be what? Low. Uh, we have this one called intertindal wave. Intertindal wave where it is moving from upper to lower or from lower to higher. Okay, from upland to lowland or from lowland to higher. Those who live around the sea knows what I'm talking about. So, there is this movement back and front. This is that manner. Then the water depth, which I had. Uh, previously described for you in this lecture, you saw the water there. So it affects this microbe. So the deeper it is, the, the difficult for their survival. I said those with very high sophisticated adaptive uh, features. The next one is the oxygen level. So the, as we go down the depth of the sea, the oxygen level keep what? Depreciating. But as we go up, doesn't level keep getting what high. The pressure also is another dynamics of factor affecting these microbes in the marine ecosystem. So here, the height as we go down the depth, the pressure is very very high. Okay. The, the next one is the light. The light is very important. It affects microbial processes. So at the top there is light. At the bottom there is that there is dark darkness so this light so all these dynamics eight and many others affect this microbes survival in the, in the marine ecosystem okay the next is the types of microbes in the marine ecosystem the marine ecosystem is highly inundated with lots of micro um, uh, my organism system and the dominant organism in this ecosystem is what the marine, the uh, microorganisms, which which range from bacteria, fungi, algae, protozoa, viruses, and what? Echia. So the echia. The, um, so of all these, of all these uh, microorganisms, the dominant is the bacteria. So this are very abundant and we can easily isolate them from the marine ecosystem. Why someone will be asking why is it important for us to study marine uh, microbiology? 
the marine microbiology is important because the marine itself is a veritable and a high reservoir of uh, resources, the microbial resources. Microorganisms can be exploited uh, and be used for biotechnological work application of their products. Several researches have shown that organisms obtained from the, this marine eco system, they do better than the non-marine ecosystem. And so it's important because it is rich, it's a rich natural resource that is contain thousands to millions and billions of organisms. So we hope that with advance in biotechnological and DNA engineering, a lot of microbes are yet, microbial identities and names of the nomenclatures are yet to be what? Exploited in this, um, in this uh, resource, okay? Now, the, the, we want to say here that, uh, that uh, the marine ecosystem is, is, is known is known to, to touch because it's, it affects virtually a, a, a lifestyle and benefit of what mankind. So if you enjoy our lecture series, eh, we would like you to like would like you to do what uh, uh, like, subscribe, and then share. Hmm? Share. Share this video. Hmm? You can also comment and for where you an aspect which you have uh, lectured or discussed previously where it is not uh, clear. You can comment. Hmm? We are going to respond to you at the what appropriate what time. Thank you for listening and giving me your audience. And uh, see you next time. God bless you.